Barry, take four board on then. Action! Forward a bit, Dave. Forward. Super baddie Darth Vader up to no good at all, again in The Empire Strikes Back. David yeah. Prowse, how did a West Country boy get to be one of the nastiest men in the galaxy? It's amazing, isn't it? I, I, actually, I, was, I, I was sat at home one day and I got a phone call from my agent saying, can I go and see George Lucas? In 1976, bodybuilder actor David Prowse turned down the role of Han Solo's best friend, Chewbacca. Tell me what they are. And he said, well, the first part's a part of a character called Chewbacca. I said, what in the hell is Chewbacca? And he said, it was like a furry type gorilla that goes through the film on the side of the goodies. And I thought, I turned my nose up. I thought, well, I don't fancy uh, sort of, you know, three months in a, in a gorilla skin. I said, what's the other one? And he said, well, the other one's the big villain of the film. I said, say no more, George, I'll take it. <laughs> and he said, well, you would never regret this decision. And this is the result. It was a role of a lifetime. But the downside? David learned that his face would not be seen. Oh, well, he thought. People will still love hating the man behind the mask. And who knows, maybe one day, if the movie is a huge success, there will be sequels. Maybe, just maybe, the evil Darth Vader will remove his mask and the world can finally see the real face of Darth Vader, David Prowse. And if that doesn't happen, well at least they get to hear David Prowse as Darth Vader. Start tearing this ship apart piece by piece until you find those tapes. Find the passengers of this vessel. I want them alive! The attendance at Star Wars has been almost astronomic. Queues are still forming. In America, more money was taken at box offices in one week than for the prestigious Jaws. In London, after a month, almost 600,000 flocked to see the film. An all-time record. In 1977, David Prowse and the stars of Star Wars hit the premiere of the film. As the lights dimmed down, the film producers, actors, crew, movie critics, and David Prowse found themselves pulled into a new world as the belly of a Star Destroyer flies overhead. However, as the story took viewers inside the battleship, pulling the viewers into the story even more, David Prowse was saddened when Vader entered the film. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? He heard for the first time the lines of Darth Vader. But something wasn't right. Something wasn't right at all, and only David Prowse knew what it was. The evil, hard-toned voice coming from the mask of Darth Vader was not his. Apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers, I want them alive! I think the, the problem was, as you obviously realise, I have a, a, a West Country accent. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> very, very slight, very slight. Um, and I don't think they could do Darth Vader with an English accent. That was the big problem. And, uh, and also, you see, the character being a big black character that he is, I think George really wanted an obvious black voice, and they got James Earl Jones in to do it. And to me, it, that is a very, a very obvious Negro voice. And uh, anyway, it's, it's a nice combination, I think. So Vader lost his voice. At least the voice of David Prowse. However, he still had hope that one day he would be seen as the man behind the mask. As he says, this was promised to him by George Lucas himself. So in 1977, Star Wars tore up the box office and made everyone in it, but David Prowse, a household name. Every kid on the playground in 1977 could tell you who played Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, even C-3PO, but almost none could tell you who played Darth Vader. But with the success of Star Wars, David wasn't worried. He knew there would be a Star Wars 2, and maybe then, just maybe, the fans would get to see the man behind the mask. This is where things between Lucasfilm, George Lucas, and David Prowse seem to get a little off the rails, and even a little confusing. During a convention in 1978, two years before Empire Strikes Back, David was asked about the upcoming Star Wars 2. He gave little details, but said filming would start in February but would not be released until May of 1980. But he did promise the crowd that soon after Star Wars 2, filming for Star Wars 3 
with Start. So what was the story of this sequel? Well, according to a reporter that was there at the convention, David talked about a huge fight scene between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. During the fight, we learned the truth of who Luke's father is. It's Darth Vader. Father can't kill son. Son can't kill father. David Prowse is quoted as saying, Did David just reveal the greatest twist in movie history? That again is where things get foggy. Did David know? Or did he just make a lucky guess? This seems unlikely that David knew the twist. As the first script to Empire Strikes Back was done in early 1978, that screenplay was scrapped by Lucas, who wasn't happy with it. The twist of Vader being Darth Vader's father wasn't even in the first script, as it didn't appear until the second script written by Lucas. So it seems the whole plan of Vader being Luke Skywalker's father didn't come about until middle of 1978. The final draft of the script was done that April. Would David have known the twist as early as 1978? It seems that the major cast in the film was not even given the final pages to the script. Only Lucas, Kirshner, and the film's producers knew the real story. At the time, I knew that Mark had a father and that it was Darth Vader. But this was not in the script. There was a false page inserted. And I had the knowledge the actors didn't even have it. No one had it. It was a total secret. Even Mark Hamill himself didn't know the twist until moments before filming when director Ivan Kushner pulled Mark Hamill to the side and revealed the twist. They had taken me aside and said, this is what he's really going to say. And we're going to do the scene. And Darth Vader will be saying stuff that doesn't count. Forget it. Use your own rhythm compared to what he's doing. As for James Earl Jones, he wasn't given the line until after filming when they was dubbing in Darth Vader. When I first saw the dialogue that said, Luke, I am your father, I said to myself, he's lying. So could David Prowse really have leaked this twist in 1978? Sounds to me like it was just a lucky guess. Maybe this is how Lucas came up with the twist. The sequel to Star Wars is here. It's called The Empire Strikes Back, and George Lewis has the story. In 1980, The Empire Strikes Back was released, and the revealing twist shocked the world, as it seemed the leak really didn't hurt the film. So that was done and gone, but the work for Star Wars 3 started, and once again, David Prowse would find himself in the headline of a spoiler leak. Fans may have been a bit surprised when, at the climax of Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader's helmet was removed, revealing not the face of David Prowse, but of actor Sebastian Shaw. According to David Prowse, while working out at a gym, he met with a reporter for The Void, who he thought was there to interview him about weightlifting. However, the questions turned to Star Wars, and the reporter asked him about a leak he had heard that Vader would die at the end of the film. This is where also David learned that an actor would be playing Darth Vader without the mask and not him. And I don't know why. I mean, they've never ever discussed it with me as to why I wasn't the dying Darth Vader. I think probably the reason was that they didn't want me to get into too strong a negotiating position uh, for future movies. See, when, when, in, in the film industry, there's no, uh, you know, when there's money involved, there's no, no love lost. Like, you know, it's, uh, you know there's, no, there's no loyalty. Yeah. When the newspaper released the interview with David Prowse, the headline read, Darth Vader to be killed off in next movie. Interview with David Prowse. And things changed from that day between David Prowse, Lucasfilm, and George Lucas. That ruined my association with Star Wars, David Prowse says. Lucas wouldn't even speak to me, he adds. The documentary I Am Your Father tracked down the reporter who confirmed David never told him about how the film would end. In fact, David was not even given a script, and the lines he was giving during the filming was not used. It seems clear that David Prowse wouldn't even know how the film was going to end. The day we shot that, I thought, I wonder if Dave's going to know that this is being shot today. So just in case, I had a security guard on every door of the stage. 
Okay, very quiet. Long take. And action. But the damage was already done. And David found himself blacklisted from day one after the story hit the press. He found he was needed less and less on the set of Return of the Jedi. And when he was on set, hardly anyone spoke to him. After the release of Return of the Jedi, and no new films in sight, Star Wars died down. But in 1999, with the release of Episode 1, David Prowse found himself back in the limelight, and it seemed, once again, in hot water with Lucasfilm. That same year, David Prowse and other cast and crew from Star Wars was asked to join the first official Star Wars convention, called Celebration. In 2010, he found he was banned from all official Star Wars conventions, an order given to Lucasfilm by George Lucas himself. He was even banned from Star Wars Weekend, something he loved doing for the kids at the Disney theme park. With Disney buying Lucasfilm, fans hoped we would see David Prowse once again at Celebration and on good terms with Star Wars. But David said he had no contact by anyone from Disney or Lucasfilm. In 2018, David Prowse, mostly for medical reasons, retired from making public appearances. So it seems the feud between David Prowse, George Lucas, Lucasfilm, and now Disney will never be resolved. As David said he was told, he just burned too many bridges over the years. If you would like to know more about the feud between George Lucas and David Prowse, please check out the wonderful documentary, I Am Your Father. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.